This evening, we're going to do an exploration of the dream world. We're going to use it as a way to understand the waking world. We're going to do it through the application of the idea of analogy. A member in our audience has been gracious enough to volunteer a dream. I have no knowledge of it up to this point, and therefore we would thought we would take this time to explore a dream and take it through the kind of analysis that is common in the game of philosophical midwifery. So, all we require, therefore, is that you read the dream. <clears throat> I understand it was recorded first, and then I transcribed it. Transcribed it. <laughs> and therefore, read it aloud, or play it aloud, read it, read it aloud. Okay. Thank you. Um, first, the date, what day? Hometown. Mm -hmm. And as we're driving through, we uh, we get into an older portion of town with with dirt roads and large old craftsman style homes. And obviously, some sort of natural disaster has occurred because only the top halves of the houses seem to be sticking up out of the ground. And I can't tell. If the bottom stories, these are two-story homes, if the bottom stories have, have sunk into the ground or if they've been destroyed like uh, in an earthquake. And so there's three blocks of these abandoned houses. Three of them, huh? Three blocks, yes. And we're driving along. And as we're driving along, we inadvertently drive off of, of a cliff into this abyss. And we crash, we burn, we die. And everything goes to black. And in the dream, I, there's a brief moment of just experiencing the nothingness of this. But then the dream starts up again. We're now at the bottom of this canyon where we had landed, and there's piles of rubble from the aftermath of the, this disaster. And there's even skeletal bones sticking out of heaps of, of rubble. And my grandmother is now with us, and she takes us to this small house uh, that she's going to be putting up for rent. Um, and the entire house is, the inside of the house is entirely lined with glass shelves filled with, filled with my uncle, my dad, my uncle, he's, he's dead, um, his hippie tchotchkes. Um, hippie? He, hippie tchotchke, he was a hippie, my uncle was a hippie. So he always had lots of little knickknacks and strange collectibles. But a lot of these are very delicate glass objects, like little bottles and things. And as I'm looking at them, I keep thinking that at some point, I'm probably going to inherit these. And, and I'm struck by the irony that, that, that these things are very, um, they're very popular, they're very vogue right now. By the time I probably get them, they won't be. But then I, then I rationalize and say to myself that perhaps because these are real and not replicas, that maybe yeah. uh -huh. they'll maintain some value. And also I want to... Hold it, hold it, hold it. Okay. Just go back over that one. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but not when I get them. Go ahead. Yes, when I get them, uh, maybe they'll still be worth some money. Go ahead. Okay, so and I wanted to note that my grandmother, throughout this dream, is very slow and zombie-like um, in her movements and her speech. She's she's monosyllabic. She just is like going through in a trance. Um, and then the dream changes, and Terry and I are driving again. But now we are in a cityscape, 
We're trying to turn left onto a major thoroughfare, but we we're, are unable to do so because there's a, this large parade, a march of pedestrians, and they're all marching somewhere, and, and I'm having trouble asking I'm asking people where they're going and they don't seem to want to respond and finally I get one person to answer me and he informs me and then I remember that today is the day that people will be meeting in mass to block out a portion of the moon. The well, logic th just do that again because it's rather good. Okay? okay. People are going to meet today. In they're they're meeting at a specified place to meet in mass and in in their mass, they will be blocking out a portion of the moon. The logic goes really haywire here, but this whole act has some sort of scientific or humanitarian necessity. And that's the end of the dream. Good. Could you mind going over it once more? From the beginning? Yeah. And as you do so, if you remember anything in addition, uh, sure. by going over it, just let me know. We'll put it in. Okay. There are a couple of things. So, um, again, it starts out with the two of us driving through Amarillo, Texas, and uh, we find ourselves in an older part of the town with dirt roads, all these large old craftsman style homes sticking out of the ground. Um, one note. I'd like to make at this point is while I was having last week when I had this dream I was working on uh, a drawing that incorporated the image of Cadillac Ranch which is outside of Amarillo Texas and it's it's a it's an art piece where the Cadillacs are sticking out of the ground and so you just see the half of the cars, there's mm -hmm. two of them. Yeah, go back then. Okay, and so we're looking at these houses and we're driving along these three blocks where all these houses have been destroyed and then we drive off into this abyss and we crash and we die. And there's just this, it goes to black. And then the dream starts up again mm -hmm. and we're where we had landed and there's all these piles of rubble mm -hmm. and there's bones sticking out of a couple of the heaps and now my grandmother has, has joined us and she takes us to this small house that she owns but she's going to put it up for rent and she's walking us through the house the house she has an office in this house I do remember that my grandmother keeps an office in Amarillo Texas um, so this is where, in the dream, her office is at, and then the her house, office is in that house or in the city. In the dream, it's in the house. Okay. In reality, it's in Amarillo. Um, also, the the note about my grandmother being slow and zombie-like. My grandmother is in the early stages of Alzheimer's disease. Mm -hmm. I think that had something to do with it. Um, and I asked, oh yes, and I also asked her about the houses sticking out of the ground, and I said, is, was there a flood? Uh, have these houses sunk? And she said, yes. Yes, flood? Yes, it was a flood. Anyway, and then there's all the tchotchkes from my, my uncle, who um, died when I was 14, um, and uh, there, their, their retro 60s uh, tchotchkes me uh, memorabilia and I'm thinking by the time I get these they're just they're just going to be things to throw in the garage it's just going to be garbage nobody's going to want these and um, my husband and I are into collectibles and we have a lot of uh, a lot of collectibles a lot of different things very much like these tchotchkes in the dream. So then the dream changes, mm -hmm. and we are now in the car driving again, but it's a, it's a very cosmopolitan setting. It reminded me of London, or maybe um, Barcelona. It was, a, it was very European in feel. 
and we're, we're trying to turn left onto a major thoroughfare, but uh, we can't because there's just this throng of people who just uh, keep coming. It's just, they're, they're almost in single file, marching to someplace specific, and um, I get out of the car, I'm out of the car, and I'm trying to stop people and ask them where they're going, um, not getting a lot of response, and finally somebody does tell me, and, and then I remember that I knew that today was the day that these people were, were meeting in mass at the um, bequest of, of a particular person, a man. Uh, but anyway, they're meeting in mass to create this mass to block out. It's it's the entire moon except for like a sliver that they would be um, covering, and that this. This act had some sort of humanitarian or sci scientific um, necessity to it. Mm -hmm. oh, very, very interesting. Thank you, John. Mm -hmm. um, just to make it easier for us in looking at this, um, like it looks like this is one scene. this whole s section. And then the car driving off the cliff mm -hmm. to um, recovering, coming out of it. Three. Three. Um, meeting your grandmother. Four. And five. Okay. See why the way we mark that? Just kind of clear pieces so that we can talk about each piece separately. <clears throat> um, oh, is there anything that in that you find curious or mystifying or you want to say anything about the dream before we begin? Um, Any themes in it that interest you? The thing that, that struck me, I guess, the most when I initially had the dream or when I woke up was was the dying. Um, mm -hmm. I, I've died in my dreams before. That's not an uncommon thing for me. Mm -hmm. But this particular time, I had a real sense of the nothingness. Mm -hmm. During that moment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that was mm -hmm. Yes. Right. Um, there was a lack of any emotional. I, mm -hmm. I didn't have really any emotional mm -hmm. uh, attachment to anybody or anything in this dream. Yeah, from the beginning to end. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Oh. Um, interesting that they're old-fashioned houses and the only thing that's left is the roofs and the rest is crumbled or buried or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what kind of houses? Anything? They were the craftsman style, the old wooden houses, two-story with the big porches out front. Uh-huh. And they were all dark brown. What does that mean? What, that they for were you? Brown? What do those houses mean for uh, you? They're, they're a style of house that I like oh, very good. much. Fine. Fine. Like them? No, fine, fine. Would like to live in one. Like to live in one? No, three b blocks of it. Wow. Um, 
anything of interest in that drive as you're driving through? You're driving through and you see the disaster. And then you get back into the car. Well, we're, actually, we've been in the car. We're still in the car. Oh, you're still in the car through the whole thing. Yeah, we're just right, driving right. through these three streets. All right. And then you go off that, mm -hmm. right. and then the disc comes back, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, you said that you often, you have had experiences in the past of dying in your dreams. So what do you call uh, that experience of dying and do you also when you have dreams of dying also come out of it no I mean I, I what has always happened is I die and, and it will go to black uh -huh. and then another dream will start this is right. the first time I've ever remembered that it, it so continues. what would you then say the theme of the dream is from one two three right Disaster, mm. right? Mm -hmm. And the things that <clears throat> are level, the things that you like and you like to live in, right? Whole areas of it. Right. You wonder about the cause, right? right? And then you uh, crash, mm -hmm. die, mm -hmm. and what would you call three then? What name would you put on it? Is there a, it, it, what? I it just it felt like there was some unfinished business. It it, oh. it really felt like the, I needed to go back and <clears throat> work on mm -hmm. that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Needed to go back, unfinished business. Right. So it's like a second chance. Pardon? Like a second chance, or yeah, second chance. So, what would you say two to three is? Second chance? <laughs> that what? Was it second chance? I, I, yeah, oh, second okay. chance. That's right. But what do you call death and coming back? A resurrection? Or a rebirth or resurrection? <clears throat> For a second chance. <clears throat> So then would you agree we have to figure out what you do with your second chance? Yes. Yeah, and what do you, now we're into four, aren't we? Um, talk about that uh, hippie stuff. What is, come on, just talk about it for you. What does that age mean? What does that mean? <laughs> right. Your uncle, his my, involvement. My uncle, my uncle was, um, I'm trying to remember how old he was when, it, when he died. I didn't know him very well. Um, mm -hmm. I, lately though, he's, he's been on my mind quite a bit. He, he was, uh, I don't want to say iconoclastic, but he did not, conform, especially to the family's um, role model, or uh, he was he was an outsider and he was a hippie and he he left home. Um, he I don't even think he graduated from high school. Went to San Francisco and lived in a bus, and then moved to Santa Fe and started a an eight track tape business and became very successful but mm -hmm. the thing was is m my experience with him was always when he was away 
because, because he left home, I stayed in his room, which was in the basement, and it was full of all of this stuff. He, he collected comic books and um, playing cards with naked girls on them. You know, I used to sit and go through all this stuff. And now, I have a lot of the same sort of stuff. I mean, my interest, I, I enjoy collecting that kind of stuff. And I have a feeling it came from that, that point in my life. Mm -hmm. But not then. But now you do, now you enjoy collecting yes. all that stuff. Yes, but I enjoyed, yeah. I enjoyed his stuff then. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, you enjoyed it then, too? Oh, yeah. Oh, good, 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 good. That's even better. Right, no split. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So if we would ask um, what these delicate glass bottles and things, the hippie stuff, mm -hmm. we can say, it's this. Mm. Right, that's what it is. Right, it's his stuff. Right. And you lived in it once, right? It's lived in his basement flat, or, right? So, would you tell me if you were going to say that's what is, we can just take that, you see. If we had a plastic sheet then over this, we could just write over it now, couldn't we? Here, the, the delicate, have another color, we might even be able to do it. Ha! Let it not be said that we have not another color. So, <clears throat> this delicate glass bottles and the hippie stuff. Mm -hmm. That's what we mean by it. And then, if that's what we mean by it, what would it mean then for you to say, I'm going to inherit this stuff. Well, I'm, my initial reaction to inheriting it is is very favorable. I I feel like I have an appreciation for this um, that goes beyond. A superficial appreciation, and that even though other people may not be able to perceive the value of it, mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. do. Yeah. I know. I know what it's worth, and what it represents. Is that right? Did I add that to it? Yes. Is that equally there? Okay, yeah. But you're going to. You haven't. No. Right, therefore, what would you say this statement means, therefore? What kind of a statement would you call out when someone knows something about the future? Right. See, no, did anybody tell you you were going to receive no. it in the dream? No. You just know you're going to inherit it. Uh, so you know, uh, so this is a kind of a knowing, right? Knowing what? Future. Yeah. What we want to call, no, okay, no, my future direction. Uh, and there's a certain problem about their present value and their possible future of the value, but what do you think about that in terms of the dream? I think that that's 
rational voice that running through there that's it's the side of me that looks at things and tries to talk myself out of it. It's, it's almost like my devil's advocate. I, I think that I ultimately in the dream I even know that, that those things are invaluable to me and it's irrelevant what they mean to ah, other people. Good, good. I know what they're worth to me. Mm -hmm. uh, I know their value. Uh, good, 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 good. So now we have this curious five, don't we? Yeah. Now you're back in the car, mm -hmm. in a foreign place, mm -hmm. right? Foreign place. Mm -hmm. um, as you consider that, right? Go back into the sense of the dream. Is that something they're going to do? What the people? That yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. No, they haven't done it yet. No, there's a designated right. meeting place. That That's they a are designated in. meeting place, mm -hmm. right? And they're going to create. They're going to create a life size. A life size. Yeah, of the moon, the the entire moon. Assuming that the moon was whole, it would. It, they were going to create. This. In, in their yeah, they were all going to stand around and and create a circle the size of the moon, except for a very small wedge. I like that. I, now, come on, let's do it again, okay? okay. Is the moon up? Or will no, the moon be light. up? I don't even okay, all right, that's out, okay. Mm -hmm. So, let's see if we can do it together, all right? What are they going to create? They're going to create the moon. Right? Mm -hmm. Full moon, there we are. Yeah, except for like an eighth wedge. Uh, but you have it as if it were in the middle. Actually, it's not. It's from the bottom. It's like at four o'clock. Like four o'clock, where? Starting Going this way? Yes. Oh, no. Um, it would be like a piece of pie. Yes. Four o'clock to five o'clock. There you go, yes. So that would be the part of the moon that would remain revealed. That's their goal. And they're all marching. <clears throat> you finally get a response. Someone finally tells you what it is. But I knew it. I, I, I had forgotten. In the dream, I did know about this, but had forgotten that it was this day. And it was when somebody finally responded to my question that, that it all came back to me. So I recall... Right its purpose and occasion, right? Its purpose and occasion. Um, now, in terms of the dream and the sense in which you have it, uh, what would this sphere they're building do? What would they do with it? Like, they, they were going to block the moon. I just they're going to block the moon. So in some way, go ahead. It would have to. Yes. Take. Yeah. Somehow be raised. Right. And there would be uh, a part remaining in view for the what? For the moon to shine. For through. the moon would shine through. I see. I see. I see. Huh? Now you see, we got to play with this for a few minutes in terms of the dream. They're all going to do this. Now, see whether you can see the language you used on your piece of paper there. 
Can you read it again and then anything you want to add to it? Because there's something curious about it, isn't it? Okay. Um, so I ask one person where they are going. He doesn't answer me. Next person informs me. And then I, I recall that today is the day that people will meet in mass to block out a portion of the moon. Thank you. They'll block out a portion of the moon. Go ahead. Okay, wrote, Logic goes haywire here, but the act had a scientific or humanitarian necessity. Um, so it's kind of staying. Do you find that puzzling or not? Yeah. And what way do you find it puzzling? Well, logically, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, it's puzzling in that how would a group of people standing down on the earth, be able to block out the moon, why would they block out all but a small part of the moon? Good, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. If it were successful, they would block out only, they would block all except a small portion of it. Right. How does that fit with what you understand to be its purpose? It's Watch, I'm staying with the words, all right? Okay. They will block out a portion of the moon. The way in which you described it, is that what this is doing? No. It's actually doing what? The opposite. The opposite. Yes. That's what I find intriguing about it. Huh. I mean, if, there's that, if that's their purpose, then what are they doing? They're doing the opposite of what they intended. Gosh. Huh. Or the reverse. Reverse opposite in that sense. Huh? Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, any sense in the dream of uh, what it would be like if they were successful in this? Or is that outside of the dream? <clears throat> no, and as a matter of fact, in my I have a sense in the dream that they would be successful, and they would accomplish it. Um, it was an ambitious, mm -hmm. but that in accomplishing this, there would be there would be something significant. Something significant was going to happen as a result of oh. this. Oh, something would happen as a result of this, right? Mm -hmm. All right something a, good. Though. And good. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yes. The result would be a good. Mm -hmm. All right. That's important. All right and you thought it was humanitarian or scientific, more likely which? Both? Okay. Yeah. Any idea of the state of the moon at the time? It was full. Full, right, 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 right. Yeah, talk about the moon. Like there you were, this is what I was thinking of, right? What was it like recalling it? Right, you recalled it, said. Right, remember that? You said, I recalled its purpose and the occasion. Remember I added the word occasion, you agreed to it, right? Mm -hmm. right. What was that like when you recalled that? What was that like? It was, that's interesting, um, this, this 
thing that they're doing is, is so significant and Mm -hmm. I would be so out of, out of sync or out of touch in my head, not that I would have forgotten this, this, this thing that's going on. Right. Then that gave you the sense that I was out of touch to have forgotten it. Preoccupied, busy. Okay, preoccupied? In my head, yeah. What, what's, uh, talk to me about what that means for you. Yeah. It was so significant that since I just recalled it, go ahead. What does that mean? Preoccupied, what does that mean? Being preoccupied? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Not in the moment? I mean, I don't It was so significant. Oh, I recall that. I mean, the, well, the, the, it struck me mm -hmm. that I could not believe that I would have forgotten something so yeah. significant. Yeah. yeah. That this is this had been something that I had heard about, and I'm not sure if I wanted to be a part of it or not, but I certainly believed in it, and I felt like in the dream this this action, I don't even know what to call it, but it no. just was going to change things from then on. It, and here I was trying to make a left-hand turn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So again, it has a future direction, another future direction, isn't it? Right? Mm -hmm. Promise of, right? Agree? Yes. Not only a future direction, but a future uh, a change of future. Future. Um, it'll change things from now on, so that it would be uh, worse. No, better. Oh, better. Oh, oh. So it woke you up to something you forgot. What is it you forgot? That things are going to be better. Yeah, that there's something going on that's mm -hmm. extremely significant. And I wasn't paying attention. I believed in it, right? I believed in it. Mm -hmm. I know things may change from now on. Mm -hmm. Forgot about it. Mm -hmm. Almost missed it. Almost missed it, yeah. right? <clears throat> Almost missed it. By gosh. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> um, so, um, um, what kind of people would those people be? Uh, you know, just put names on them. What kind of people are those kinds of people that do those kinds of things? To what kinds of people are they? The kind of these people that were marching here? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, what kind um, of people? They were people on a mission. They had a purpose. They had a purpose. Yes. Right, they had a purpose. They had a mission. By gosh. Uh, in what way? I mean, uh, they were all frowning and upset? No, I mean, they weren't frowning and upset, but... They had a purpose? They had a purpose, and when I was trying to get them to tell me what they were doing, they didn't appreciate the distraction. Oh. That was why they weren't... Therefore they were... You were a distraction by asking them that. Mm -hmm. Therefore they must have been involved in what they were doing. Yes. Ah, oh, oh. So they were one-pointed? Yes. Doing this thing which was so significant. Yes. <clears throat> hmm. Say again, what kinds of people are these who don't feel anything like the moon or involved in us? Just serious, significant? They seem serious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Um, passionate, uh, yep. committed. Passionate. Committed. 
they were going to be making a difference. Right. They, will, they will make a difference. Right. They're passionate, they're committed, and when you woke up at that moment, so that's what you recall <coughs> of what was, um, you saw it was so significant, you woke up to the fact that you were preoccupied in some way to have, how would you say it? Well, when I, <coughs> when I finally realized Mm -hmm. that that's what was happening, that that's where these people were going. Mm -hmm. I, I, I had nice gesture, do it again. Mm -hmm. Where has my head been? Yeah, where has been my, yeah, where has my head been? Yeah, where has been my head been? Yeah, yeah. That's a good thing, I'll put it somewhere. All right. All right. Where has my head been? But you did. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> Remember, um, what can I see this is a kind of a loose and, and curious question, but uh, oh, you know, it's part of the dream. Um, what kind of people are going around that would do that? Involved in the moon? What, what would you just, what goes with that? I mean, do you have any interest in, in the moon? Did I have any interest yeah, in it? Yeah, yeah. Yes. What? In the moon? Well, not in the moon so no, much, but, but in making this difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This positive, symbolic yeah. act. Yeah, symbolic act. Yeah. And we, uh, um, we find it curious, do we not, that uh, they may be doing it in the reverse way? Yeah, that's what I'm about. Huh, right? That I don't understand. Yeah, well, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you don't get off easy in a dream. Yeah. But, <clears throat> so in any case, <clears throat> a part of the moon would remain in view and shine through, wouldn't it? Yes. Huh? Yes. Less than perhaps they intended, if we stay with the language. Yeah. But the moon is still will shine through. Right. They they knew that they were going to be leaving a portion. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, okay. they knew it. All right. Yeah, well, it's not an accident then, right? It's design. Mm -hmm. Right. And therefore, a part would shine. Shine. Shine through. through. Oh, yeah, yeah. What comes What comes up for you when you think of that? Light shining through. Illumination and just. Not, not blocking out the light entirely. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay, what? I'm going to shift down. Okay. Um, I'm going to point to certain things in the dream now. Mm -hmm. okay. Number one, the recollection. I recalled. Mm -hmm. right. I recalled. Mm -hmm. um, what was it like when your grandmother took you to the uncle's house where she has an office? Ooh. What was that like, that trip? I just I remember her being slow and yeah. um, slow like zombie like zombie like yes like in a trance. Um, what was it like for you to be there? I 
know what you're asking. I, I, yeah, I okay. really rem remember Well, see, what I'm asking is whether or not you can identify any particular state of mind right. that's associated here in this scene in the dream. Right. Um, and just, if you say, no, no, it's good enough for me. Well, just just the, what was going through <clears> my mind about the um, the stuff, all the all the stuff, and, and how much there was. Yeah, because there is an interesting Oh, he's a nonconformist, outsider, right? And uh, if you're going to inherit uh, him, yes. or whatever he represents, as well as the things yes. in the house. Something just came to my <clears> mind <throat> in that my grandmother was showing me this house that she owned. It's a small little rental house, and so my grandmother does own rental property. But I was treated as she would. I'm not part of the family. I was almost as if she was showing it to me as a potential renter. I was like, as a renter, yeah, 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 good, a stranger. good. Okay, then that's easy. Mm -hmm. Fine, 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 yeah. So the positive state then is when you recognize these things, mm -hmm. right? Because you knew their value, remember that? Yes. Right? I know what they're worth to me. In the dream, what was like that? What was it like there for knowing that you were going to inherit those things and you knew what it was worth to you? What was that like? It was pleasant. I don't know what that word means. <laughs> I, don't um, I, I don't. I was, I was glad. I, I, I thought it was... Glad. Um, That's somewhat better. <coughs> it was good. Oh, it was good. Oh, it was good. That's getting a little better. Glad, good, pleasant, glad, good. It was a positive experience. It was a positive experience. <laughs> My God. You couldn't be recalling it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, by the way, <clears throat> in the past, uh, you had this dream Tuesday, right? Tuesday night. Yes. Uh, what kind of a positive experience is this? By that I mean, how would you rank this experience in the dream with the seven days since you had the dream? That particular Positive moment. experience, that's right. With so, um, if I had here, <clears throat> seven days of your experiences, mm -hmm. and we were to say, say, where would you put this one, glad, good, positive experience, in terms of what we went through this past week? Modest? Um, a little bit better than modest. You know, just, uh, I give it an eight. Eight out, modest, of, 10. out of ten. That's yeah. good, that's good. Yeah. Huh? And do the same thing for me when you recalled, what was that like? Well, that <coughs> recollection wasn't good because, I mean, well. It was alert though. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, that one, that one just seems to have more import to me. That had more input, yeah. sure, sure. Therefore, you'd have to kind of put it higher than eight. Yes. Right. Okay. Like. Okay, maybe make that a seven, and this one would be. Um, this was good. This was nine. I mean, it was. All right, nine. Okay, okay. Right. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
put you in touch with. <clears throat> what do you say? Put you in touch with when you recall the all out. See, you recall. God, I couldn't believe I forgot. It was so. See, now we can underline the word so, can't we? All right. Well, it's going to change things from now on. Major change, right? Mm -hmm. Almost missed it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's a kind of an interesting wake up, isn't it? Right? Very. So it's a wake up as well as realizing the good. Yes. <clears throat> hmm. Say, in your uh, past uh, seven days, did you have any uh, niner during the waking world? Or, let me put it another way. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, I'll stop. Got one going, don't ask another. <laughs> no, go ahead, ask. Uh-uh. <laughs> um, of that significance? I know I've had some insights over the past week. I don't know if I would... You've been having insights the past week? Yes. Yeah. Um, insights that... Um, Have that kind of ramification? Yeah. 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 I think the ramification is there. I don't hmm. know if I'm... If I'm there yet, it's... Um, it's kind of like the other uh, recollection you're talking about with my uncle and knowing that I was going to be inheriting that mm -hmm. stuff. It, it's inheriting so that, whatever that means. Yeah. Right. It's, it's there. I'm getting there. You're getting there. Yeah. You're getting to where your uh, insights are. Right. Right. Not quite as relevant. Uh, revelatory as, as this one, mm -hmm. but in terms of significance, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know what the yeah meant. Well, I'm, I'm just saying, is in terms of significance, um, I feel that the things <clears throat> that I'm getting to, while I may not have the huge revel revelation, the significance would be um, equitable to this in okay. my dream. Okay, let me see if I can ask you it this way. All right. Okay. All right. Here is your everyday world. And in this everyday world, you're experiencing insights at various times, right? And can Considering their implications, are you not a little to some? Well, what would They're you say? More personal revelations. Personal revelations. Right. That may have uh, consequences. The revel yeah. consequences in that clearing away. Oh no! Okay, now here is the dream. Yes, clearing away. Yeah, here's the dream. Okay. Many things are similar, aren't they? Uh, which one would you say is more accurate? What if the dream, say, what if the dream mm -hmm. is, go ahead. <clears throat> a reflection upon my everyday life. And <clears throat> if so, what is it doing to you? What's it saying? What's it doing? It's, it's reflecting. It's reflecting. Is it uh, putting it down? Is it no? Uh, you do it. It's, it's revealing. I mean, it's revealing what? That you're... Uh, that I'm going through a period in my life where I'm having these <clears> revelations. <throat> mm. 
and that they're they're positive they're all positive yes and uh, you almost missed it <laughs> <laughs> and this all has a purpose <laughs> right is that right yes and you're in with people who are fooling around with the moon yeah. moon weird. watchers weird people moon, mooners moon, moonies <laughs> moonies <laughs> different kind of moonies right but moon some kind of moon yeah that's a joke but uh, <laughs> but okay you are seeing many parallels yes yeah so let's put it this way suppose this we could say had a certain way of representing your life something like this the same thing is it here lower your estimate is it lower than the dream is making it it's hmm. a good question um, no oh is the dream Correcting it then? I think the dream is on target, actually. Oh, what would that mean you're doing? Then you got to do what with this cookie? Good. Pull it up a bit? Yeah. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. What does that mean now? I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You led me here. Help me. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. 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 Now, the moon is quite an image, and we haven't really gotten to it. Equally well, <clears throat> the skeletons and the debris, the rubble haven't dealt with that. Right. It may be that some people didn't survive this kind of experience, but you did. Right. Not clear about that because we haven't really explored it. Okay, number one. <clears throat> what would it mean that, um, see if we get correct, would you, this mean then you're leaving something? Hmm. Picking up a this and then, right? This what? Is, well, the first part of the dream is is kind of like I used to live in Amarillo. That's where my family's from. There's, it's a history. Yeah. Are you then going back to your past or leaving it? I'm leaving it. Yeah. And. Th and that's kind of where I am right now. Mm -hmm. I think with the house and my, my grandmother and, and looking at all my family, my, my, the uncle, all of the stuff in my family and... Yeah. And you may inherit the... Uh, what's your name? The, uh, my uncle's... Uh, the non... What is he again? Hmm? The Non-conformist yeah. outsider? Oh, yes, yes, yes. You, oh, you might inherit maybe. the... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Yeah, mm, wow. Mm. Yeah, well, I knew one. Mm. I knew an outsider at really? once. Yeah. Mm. And, uh, and that you discovered, would you agree, some value in that? Yes. Very positive yes. value, right? Right, mm -hmm. right. And now you. Uh, woke up to your. Like a moon. <laughs> All right. That's pretty interesting. Now, in this kind of a game, what we would do would be to ask the dreamer to watch for more information on this, why this was chosen. We haven't cracked that yet. All right. Often what happens is that you can get this in a series and that will make increasing, bring a certain degree of clarity and increasing precision to that. Um, well, now that you uh, look at it, how does it look to you? Curious little dream, just a few sentences long? It's a lot there. Hmm. Mm. Now, before I throw it open, which I'd like to do, 
<clears throat> find it interesting that whatever is the maker right, of the dream If I must know your past, present, possible, future, it picks out uh, events in your life, key events that represent a great deal of material. So these events and the symbols in these events can represent in a very, right, we might call it congealed form, a whole complex, such as we found here behind the glass images and, and the hippie stuff and the cartoons, etc. Right? right? And picked out your uncle to represent this particular stage that you're in, right? in your present. And it's presenting it in such a way, grammatically, to see that you're moving. The, the kind of change you're going to go through is like... Like being reborn. Yeah. Yeah. So it does that with all the artistry and all the audio-visual aids. And, right? And gives it to you to reflect on. So when you have nothing else to do, and you're thinking of making a toast to some deity, and you've toasted them all, and you have one left, toast the Dream Master. That's what I do. Thank you very much for contributing this. Thank you. Let me throw it open for questions. Do you have any idea how people were standing with respect to the moon or going to stand? Could you do it a little louder, please? Yeah. Do you have any idea how they were going to position themselves with respect to the moon? Like, how they were going to stand? Yeah, that's where, the, that's where it's very strange, because I had a real strong sense that they, they were just going to be standing in, in a spot, but there were going to be enough of them, collectively, that they would create a circle large enough. My question kind of is... Would they, would they have their, I, you know, I know it's, I, don't, I'm not concerning myself with the logic so okay. much as, where is the moon with respect to the people? Um, it's, they're there. The moon's, the moon's up in the sky. I mean, mm -hmm. I think that it, so are they, you talked about the orient, are they all oriented the same way with respect to it? Oh, you mean facing? Mm. Or not facing? or looking, or heads up, or heads down, or whatever? Just, I just I mean, have a sense, of, a sense of them standing. I really mm -hmm. didn't have a sense okay. of Okay. Well, then it's, then it's good just to see that that isn't, you know, right. doesn't play a role. No, okay. Are they lit by the moon? Are they lit by the moon? No, it's, it's daylight, so it's... No. Mm -hmm. Um, do you want to play any more with the moon? Sure. Anything comes up to you? Talk, stories, tales, anything at all that comes up to you with the idea of... Um, it's, it's, never, it's never been really a, a symbol for me before. Good. Good. And I think that that's, it's significant in that. Yeah, yeah, okay. You're going to watch for it. Okay. I'm thinking about one thing that she said from the beginning to, to the end, which is she's traveling with her husband. Yes. They both die. I don't know, is he with you through the grandmother experience? Yes, mm -hmm. he's and there. And then he's, then he's at the end too, so is there something to that she, through whatever this changes, she's bringing him with her mm -hmm. through all of it, all the way through to the very end experience. Yeah. That's very important. Thank you. Yeah. She wants 
something there or, or to be aware of it yeah. too or something. See, we could even get perhaps a little more precision if we were to say, by the way, in the dream, do you know who was driving? He's driving. He's driving. <laughs> Yes, he's driving. Is he in all of this then? Again, through this? Mm-hmm. Okay. Although, he's there. He's okay. just there. Okay. He doesn't really affect anything that's going on. Okay. Good. In the original reading of the dream, um, because the second time you went through, you paraphrased a little bit, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. And uh, at, fi at five, um, where you're talking about the value of these things, uh, you, know, you made that statement. It was very interesting how you, in the reading of the dream, you said they're popular now, it's an in thing now, I'm not sure the exact words. What? Yeah, it's a four, but four, just below that. And uh, the, um, but then you said, in, when, when later, when, they, when you're going to get them, mm -hmm. you had worries about whether they would be a fad anymore or something like that. I'm not mm -hmm. using my own words. Mm -hmm. But then you said that you would, you would, you knew that they would have a value. I mean, that wasn't brought out that that struggle you were going through mm -hmm. because you knew, and I think the words you used are that these were the genuine ones and not the uh, not the facsimiles. Facsimiles right. that, right. Like that a lot of people things. are. Yeah. Like people buying lava lamps and things like that that have been reproduced and things right, like that. Right, there, 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 these, these were genuine. I, you know, that part of the dream bothered me because I felt, I felt like I, I was cheapening it by even thinking of it in monetary means, you know, mm -hmm. giving it a dollar value and, and why would I care about that? You know, mm -hmm. why would I care how much it would be worth uh, dollar-wise? Mm -hmm. That's almost like a stage, a step you went through. You went from worrying about it being a fad thing, seeing in the future maybe the fad wasn't worth it all, but then they are real, and you know they're real, and then to go beyond that into the, to the real value. Right. Beyond mm -hmm. the monetary value. Right. It's interesting. Yeah. Good, good. Um, how are those people uh, dressed or in any way? Which people? The moon people? Yeah, the people that were marching. And, uh, what kinds of people were they? The only thing I can think of, Pierre, is that they were all male. I don't remember any female faces. And okay. I don't remember how they were dressed. No. Any of them look like your uncle? No. See, this is fishing. So. Mm -hmm. And it's best not to do that, right? right? Because uh, unless the data is really there, you don't want to conclude that way. Mm -hmm. no, I didn't. See, the only thing that that indicates is that we are assuming. Um, see, there's several prophetic statements in here. You're going to inherit this, right? And this is going to make the world better. The assumption is in the stream that they can go together. And that's okay. Thank you much. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Curious stuff, dreams. Yeah. Absolutely curious. Right, Barbara? Yeah. Nice dream. Thank you. Thank you.